Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. It is Friday. It is noon central time. That means it's time for Cars on the Move, where we connect dealers, auctions, and carriers with Ty live in the transport parking lot. Make sure you can hear me okay. Mic check, one, two, three. Do me a favor. Please do leave a like after you do that. Right below the video, click share, click copy, grab that YouTube link, send it, text it, email it, fax it to somebody that you think, okay, so a carrier, either new or they've been around and you know what, work has dried up a little bit. They're not, the uh, those new vehicles, they're not moving as many as they were. Uh, used vehicles, right? Dealers are trying to acquire inventory. In fact, that's Tuesday night's show. You a dispatcher? Are you a broker? Are you a dealer? Are you trying to connect to the auto transport audience for a better car shipping business experience? This is the place to do that. You remember, you know, you can go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, become an ATI insider. More and more people are doing that, which is great. And that uh, we're actually going to talk about that. When I say we, I don't mean just me. It's me and Ty. Ty is live in the transport parking lot. Ty, can you see me and hear me okay? Yeah. Hey, Jay. I'm at America's, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. America's Auto Auction. One, my favorite auction right now. <clears throat> favorite auction. I call them independent. They're really not independent, but they do allow what I call autonomy inside the auction. So it's room for people to do what works for them, if that makes sense. Um, I came to the auction yesterday, too, and uh, I don't know if I... When I coach and talk to people, a lot of times I'm like, if you just pay attention, you can tell a lot of things. So one of the indicators when you come to the auction on sale day, if it's going to be a big sale or a little sale, is how many cars are in the parking lot. Isn't that crazy? So I knew yesterday, just pulling in the parking lot, it was probably going to be about a 600-car day, which is a little down, right? But it's still good. 600 cars, somebody's got to move them. So go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, and you actually, right there, you made a really good point. Because we all do this. When we go anywhere, we look at the parking lot, and we immediately know, okay, I'm going to have to be in a long line here at Dunkin' Donuts or whatever we're doing. Number one, we all know right away what we're looking at by the number of cars. And you always talk about the ecosystem at the auto auction. Run with that for a second. Do that again. <clears throat> well, so that's where I was actually going. Thanks. Because so I came to, okay, back up just a, a notch. So I'm at, <laughs> this is really good. Uh, I'm at, uh, on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm in clubhouse and LinkedIn. That's usually you'll find me on LinkedIn. Uh, don't hang out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, occasionally Twitter, but anyway, Reddit. Now that's where I hang. Yeah. Uh, so I, up, I thought this week I'll try to up my social media game because Jay's talking about car haulers up in their social media game. So I'll try to do one for the team. I don't like posting stuff just probably because. So I decided to take a picture of me in a transport parking lot, <clears throat> empty basically. And the picture was behind me. You could see the auction, the transport cars. <clears throat> uh, I got yeah, it I on the go screen. That next. That's it. Not Oh, no, not no, no, that one. No, no. Back okay. up the next post, the one before okay. that one. I don't know if I had. I don't think I have that one. Okay, well. Sorry, dude. Uh, anyway, I was really shocked, Jay, because <laughs> it got a crap ton of likes. <clears throat> and all it said was, is, this is a transport parking where I learned everything I needed to know about hauling cars, car, car hauler equipment, car dealers, car haulers, car pullers arbitration, post-sale inspection, lot numbers. I mean, it, you can just keep going. When you say ecosystem, in the transport parking lot, you know, I mean, I'm here every Friday. What did we meet last week? We met the washer. Remember the washer? The week I before do. we met the- David uh, the washer. Yep. And the week before that we had, oh, was he a buffer? Yeah, the buffer. Steve Jerry the buffer. The buffer. Terry Jerry the buffer. The buffer. Terry yeah. the buffer. <clears throat> so, uh, in- and it's fun because if, if an auction's, in my opinion, I'm not the authority by any means, but if an auction, in my opinion, is running right, I, uh, ancillary, I, I believe is the word, right? <clears throat> there are other businesses doing business around a business. Say that one more time. There are other businesses doing business around a business. 
And that's where the carrier comes in with the dealer. And that's where the carrier comes in with the dealer. The dealer is at the auction. Why? To buy cars. Why does he need cars? Because he sells cars. So if he sells cars, he's got to replace them. Where does he replace them? That's next Tuesday night show, which has been a real problem. So as I get calls from people that sign up for the ATI Insider because of Auto Transport Intel, the car shipping business thing, <laughs> people call and they ask questions. So our job, my job, one of my many jobs is to help people understand what they're about to get into. I want to be a car hauler, Ty. Okay. So we'll start today with Amber. Amber called. She signed up for the ATI Insider. I called her, excuse me. She did what she was supposed to. She had some questions. Amber and her husband, Don, own a transport company already. They're into freight. They've got semis. They haul stuff. They want to get into car hauling. Okay, tell me what that looks like, Amber and Don. Well, it looks like we've got a one-ton and a three-car trailer, and we're going to put a driver in it, and I'm looking for a dispatcher to get us loads off the load board. Very specific. Very specific, okay? So that tells me, as the guy who's taking the call, they've watched, heard something, because they use two terms that I hear all the time. I need a dispatcher and a load board, right? I said, well, hang on. Before you start going all the way through all that stuff, let's talk about what does this look like in your mind? In your mind's eye, what does this look like when we start talking about, I want to be a car hauler, and I got a one-ton and a three-car trailer? Well, we were going to put a driver in it. What? You're going to put a driver in your one ton, your three car. You're going to get a load board and a dispatcher, and you think you're going to make money. No. <laughs> no. And, right. So, no. And it's fun because I feel bad as I'm telling them this, and I'm saying it nice. I'm joking. I'm having fun. But <clears throat> you can tell, oh, we didn't think about that. Oh, we didn't know that. Oh, we didn't do the due diligence. They said it, right? And, and it's a great conversation. Ends up like this. Call Josh Thornton and ask him what he thinks about three-car haulers. He'll tell you and be more honest than I am, right? So do we need three-car haulers? Yeah. Can they make money? Probably not. Could they do something? Maybe. But it ultimately comes back to, if you want to be in the car hauling business, you better grow a pair, and learn to talk to people. Oh, man. And that is the... Uh, I'm going to give you the... Uh, I'm going to start the truck on that one. So here's what I want to do. And I want to <laughs> I wanna show a couple things. This is Ty at the auction, making friends, connecting with the ecosystem. It's awesome. Right, whoa, whoa, stop. Stop right there. Okay. See the guy, the picture on the left with the dude with the uh, yeah, AT? The yeah, that one? Yeah, that's... Okay. Ashby. That, that's Ashby Black. He's a transport guy. I'm at the auction. I'm doing my thing. I run into Ashby. Ashby, why is Ashby at the auction? Anybody? Raise your hand. Right. He's a carrier at the auction. What's he doing? Why is he there? I mean, he doesn't look like he's out loading the truck, right? right. I mean, look at that shirt. I don't see any grease right. on his face. What's yeah. he doing? Yo. <laughs> Hey, why is he there? Um, why? Somebody tell me, why is that guy, the transport guy, at the auction with a clean shirt on? Totally. And because we get it. Uh, people say, you know, I hate the auction. I hate talking to dealers. But there's Ashby. And Ty. And Ty. Okay, the guy on the right, the yeah. picture, that's what you call a ring man. Oh, yeah, the ring man. Talk about the ecosystem. The ring man's a really important job at the auction in the lane, right? He's doing this. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally doing that. Yeah. Why is that guy, why do, why, why, if you blow that picture up by itself, you can just barely see my eyeballs. But I mean, if you just click on the actual picture itself. Oh, I don't have it here. Yeah, I don't have uh, it here. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. Uh, because guess why I'm friends with this guy? You take a guess. I'll let you guess. Oh, shoot. Now I'm on the spot. Um, yeah. Well, here, because you're you. a nice guy? No. He oh. knows every dealer in that lane. Oh, yeah. In that auction. He knows it. He knows where they're from. He knows how, what kind of cars they buy. He, that guy knows everybody in the auction. 
Uh, and BM says, uh, thank you, BM. He is there because he has drivers while he makes connections. Does that's true too? That okay? There we go. Right on. Yeah, Whoa. that's absolutely true. Nice. Well done, BM. <clears throat> um, yeah. So also, he's inside working the auction, working the lanes. What is working the auction? Working the lanes. That's. I'm at the auction. I got in the auction. Now I'm shaking hands. Um, I bet um, you that's Jessica or or why Sean because they're in the wings and they want to they want to jump in. No, they should be. They acted like they were already on there. Um, well, I put them in the, uh, here, let's bring them in. Cause I know they're, uh, I know they're trying to, they're trying to get in. Go ahead and jump in the live chat. Thank you so much. If you're just joining cars on the move on a Friday, we're already 10 minutes in the show. We got a couple guests here with us today. They're going to join us, um, live in the zoom room. We're going to bring them in and thanks for saying hello in the live chat. What we're doing is we're talk. Ty is live in the transport parking lot. And we're talking about because this gets talked about. We 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 all know there's a, there's about a jillion videos out there talking about you can do this, you can get rich. I'm quitting. I'm going bankrupt, and all this stuff. And around and around it goes. I'm going fishing today, and I'm welding today. And so this is one of those places where you can get information. What we do on Auto Transport Intel is we try to keep it as real as we can, while inspirational, motivational, and truthful. Uh, some of it's not so popular because it's the hard stuff sometimes. And then there's Ty in the transport parking lot sneezing. Okay, Ty, let's, while, while we got the, uh, and I can't, let's see, I'm going to ask them to start their video. You guys hear me? Oh, hey, we hear you. What's going on? Hey, what's up? Hey, Ty. Hey, what, Sean? How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Hold on, let me start my video here. I'm going to share a couple of things. Newbie to car hauling. These emails come in. Um, trying to get started. DOT, if to questions. Oh, I got so many questions. DOT officer stuff. And then, you know, is this my fault? I'm the dispatcher. Um, I mean, I wasn't there, but am I liable? Um, how did this happen? Oh, my gosh. Uh, this is just insane. What happened here? Um, you know, okay. Yeah. Everybody else may know that bridge by heart. Not me. Um, now I'm out of service cause I went through all that stuff, but will you start a trucking company with me? <laughs> so how does this keep, you know, what, what do we, welcome to the show. Please say, Sean, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, let me give a little background real quick, and then I'll hand it off to you, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, you guys called, you found the show on YouTube a couple, maybe two years ago-ish? 2018. 2018, so wow, okay. Somehow you got a hold of me. We talked, car hauling stuff, like I always do. You did car hauling for a while. Tell, now tell us what how you started a company, right? Yeah. So um, back in uh, in April of 2018, we started a company. So actually, I probably started watching Jay back in 27, late 2017, um, <laughs> you know, trying to figure out uh, this the whole hotshot game and trucking, and you know, trying to find a niche, and then subsequently through meeting him eventually you came on board with the show back in 2018 at some point 2019 and uh, we we connected and met and um you guys also um recommended us to shaggy um which uh, we've built a relationship with him and uh cory from cap logistics um so it's we've uh, been able to network and grow and um, you know, th through just starting off meeting Jay. Jay had me on a show. Jay introduced me to my dispatcher, uh, Mike McDowell. Oh. And uh, that was huge for me um, in my business to get my business off of, you know, get us off, off our feet or on our feet. So, um, yeah. So uh, I, I didn't watch the, I was in a meeting so till two. So I didn't watch the beginning of the show. So I don't really know what the context is, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not, 
you know, just to say hi and catch up and, you know. Well, the, so here's some interesting things that I noticed just in what you just said. <clears throat> you started a business and something that was kind of new to you. It's two, three years later now, you're still doing it. So you're what you might call an anomaly or something special because you made it, right? And you're not even, you wouldn't even consider it. Oh, I made it. If I asked you, did you make it? No, you're still making it every day, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's always, ahead, you know, two, two steps ahead of me. It always will be though. No I hope so. How much, how successful I, I become. It'll always be ahead of me. Well, so tell us when you, when you really got started, you got your name of your company, you got everything together. Uh, then you just got into car hauling. So what, just share a little bit about how how was that maybe before you met Jay and after you met Jay and then going forward? Well, what was car hauling? Um, so I started off with a three car wedge and a and a and a um, cabin chassis thirty five hundred. We did that um, for about a year and a half, and then we got a five car and switched up trucks. And w went through a couple of trucks, had like a Freightliner Cascadia 125 single axle with a five car. And then we, um, uh, post COVID, uh, well, probably pretty much during COVID, um, we started, we, we moved into flatbed because, um, ironically, the, the customers that, that, that a few of the customers that we met that had consistent freight for us at that time was flatbed. And um, uh, one of our, our biggest customers who's still a customer today um, uh, needed needed us to do flatbed work for him. So, and insurance had gone up <clears throat> uh, for cars, you know, because of all the pictures you see with all the wedges on their side, insurance went through the roof. So it doubled in a year with, with, no, with nothing on the policy mm -hmm. negative. So, um, it just made more sense for us business wise. And we, we kind of wanted to get into, we wanted to go to, to the flatbed route anyways. So, um, yeah, we've been doing flatbed for, uh, about a year now, primarily only on the carrier side. Now we also have a broker side, uh, back in 2019, we really started picking up, uh, a lot of, uh, dealer accounts and um, flatbed, you know, uh, flatbed type uh, of work for the kit for the broker side. So we do probably just as, as much gross uh, brokering, which we net a lot more as we do on the carrier side. Um, so we're we're an asset broker, but we only have one truck, one one trailer. Um, but yeah, I mean, my wife does. We we have a dealership. Um, she moves all the used inventory for us. She's got four dealerships in Maine. Uh, she does all the used inventory for them. Um, and, you know, so, so she, she dispatches me out and, <laughs> and, and, I, and I run a flatbed only. She dispatches for So what I think I hear is that over the course of the three years, somehow you attained a customer, a client. Yeah. Yeah. They call you. Yeah. Okay. So, and how did you do that? You did that by talking to somebody? All, all through networking and building relationships. I mean, without that, it's, you know, in any business, you have to, you have to get out there and talk to people. You have to network. You have to have something of value that you can offer people. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it, and it always comes, you know, it comes, it comes back to you. Um, but you got to get out there and network. Yeah. Just through networking and building relationships and, you know, work started coming to us uh, that we couldn't handle. So that it was, it only made sense that we broker, uh, got our broker authority. And um, uh, so, yeah, just, yeah. Anyways, to answer your question, we got customers and got consistent freight by, by building relationships, not offload boards. Um, that's very difficult. To, say, say that last part one more time. Not offload boards. But we not love offload boards because we make a lot of money offload boards. I mean, brokering freight. I mean, 
they're definitely necessary and it, and it help, low boards helped me establish my business. But as far as like, you know, if you want to grow and, you know, you have to get out there and build relationships. So that's what we're doing. Um, you know, at this, so you, at this point, we're trying to network and build more relationships and grow our business. Okay. So you have freight and cars. Yes. Customers that have freight call you. Customers yeah. that have cars call you. Yes. And they want you to move them, freight yes. or cars. Yes. So you became a broker. You had a truck and a trailer. Yep. Still have a truck and a trailer, but you became a broker because you had too much to move. So you needed well, help. Well, on the on the car side, it um, the the majority of the well, all the used cars are bought offline and they're bought here, there and everywhere. So we couldn't, even with 20 trucks, we, we wouldn't have been able to satisfy by, you know, being all over the map. Um, so we had to broker those, you know, uh, unless they were directly in our, happened to fall on our lane that week or that day, then it just wasn't going to happen. So it only made sense that we got our broker authority and started. Oh, but whoa, 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 whoa. Did I hear you say you had a lane? Yeah, have we have, a lane? I have a lane on my carrier, on my car, on my flatbed carrier side. I have a lane, and I don't go out out of it if I don't have to, unless it's really, unless it's a special request or it's really, really paying good. But even then, I just stay to my lane. I, I, I stick within 500 miles of my house, and I don't leave it. I'm home twice a week. I'm home halfway through the week, and I'm home on Friday, and I, huh. and I, I don't go outside of my lane. Well, that's interesting because uh, when I talk to people and I say, hey, what I would recommend is go talk to a car dealer, find out where he buys cars. There's usually two to four places he goes the same place all the time, all the time. Yeah. Find it out. Build that lane, right? Yeah. And what's the benefit of having a lane? Why, Sean? Are you home yeah. twice a week? Oh, good. You know the road? Yeah. yeah. You know the tow truck company? Yeah. You know the tire guy? Yeah. yeah. You know the fuel stops? Yeah. You know the lady that gets the fuel? Yeah. You know yeah. the guy that does the oil? Yeah. Why does anybody want to know that? Because it's the there's one be break way. Downs, that's why. <laughs> one way to control costs, variable yes. costs. Okay. Yeah. So it's a variable cost. Mm -hmm. We don't know when the thing's going to break. We don't know what's going to happen. We just know it's probably going to happen. But I can handle it a lot better when I'm in my lane. Yeah. And I can when I'm somewhere where I'm not familiar. Yeah, I mean, the closer you are to home, the better if, if there is a breakdown. And plus, you, it's easier to project your cost when you know that you stay in that lane weekly. You know what your tolls are going to be. Or you can yeah. project what your tolls are going to be, your fuel and, you know, hotels. So, so here's the thing. I don't know. I caught Wednesday's show. Wednesday, we had Brian. Jay had Brian on, DOT Compliance. I love Brian. Brian is... Uh, honestly, I think Brian should be our new startup coach guy. That's that's how awesome Brian is. Because he, he has the same message. He just has all the basics that most people really want to know about the authority and stuff. I don't like to talk about that. But in that show, Jay pulls up. He might. Jay still may have it. Jay pulls up this slide, minus company name, minus whatever. And it says, do you want to uh, make five to seven thousand dollars a week. I got it right here. I think it's the next slide. <laughs> you can, okay. I mean, you can gross that, but that's not what you're going to take home. That's what Brian said. Okay, yeah, well, here's you what can I gross said. That, absolutely, but are you going to take that home? What do you, what, no, in fact, near that. What are, that's what he said, exactly. What, what do you think you're taking home? And I'm sorry, Ty, I just want to get to this question. Why, Sean? You just got here. None of this is planned. What do you think you're taking home? Because nobody 20%. will make this nobody will make this YouTube video. You can't find this YouTube video that I know of. Twenty percent. About twenty percent. Yes. Yep. And, and that yeah. I think over time drops because you're gonna be replacing that truck. Yes. Yeah. With a brand new truck and a brand new trailer. Yeah. So, so here's why I brought it up because after the show, and I don't know, Jay may be able to back this up, but after the show, I got a phone call and somebody was strongly disagreeing with everything, the post and the conversation, right? 
about and, uh, so about I just grossing, listened about grossing gonna... five to seven thousand. What? They, they were disagreeing with the gross five to seven thousand dollar post. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They they said no because we were uh, if I remember right, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong. Basically, Jay and Brian were talking about how that's maybe not a good idea to count on that. There may be no. something misleading there. That yeah, is absolutely. For the record, you... we're saying if you – listen, and I, I took devil's advocate. I've shared the link to the show. Go watch the show. You'll see what was said. But just to – I said, I'm devil's advocate. I said, Brian, I hear you talking. I see your lips moving, but I'm not going to listen. I'm doing this anyways. Can I still make it work? Right. So here's the, here. So I, so I listened to the guy. He he laid out his argument. <clears throat> his argument is is I make seven five to seven every week, and I don't have any trouble. I've got a five car trailer. I've got a five fifty, and uh, I don't think you guys should say you can't do that. I said, well. I appreciate you calling and letting us know that you don't agree with it. But I said, let's try to put it in context. The context here is, is there's a lot of scams out there that allure people into a business that they know nothing about. Take your money. And now what do you have? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where that post came from. I don't know what it's attached to, but I do know I'm the guy that gets all the calls all the time about somebody saw something, talked to somebody that said, I can do that. Yeah, I've heard and, twelve thousand. I've heard people say, "Oh, I can, oh, you hot shot, right? Yeah, is it true you can make twelve thousand a week?" And here's what's so uh, weird is, okay, I'm gonna I want to add this too. Maybe when you say that you're trying to be genuine, let's just go with maybe. And maybe you're not getting rich off of promoting that message. Maybe you're seeing. Maybe you're trying to get views to the moon, and that's how you're gonna get ad revenue. But whatever it is, check back in with whoever had that message a few years later. Are they still saying it? Because there are people that were saying that a few years ago, and they're not saying it the same way today. No, well, That tells I think, you something. I think what it is is people don't understand until their business gets rolling the difference between gross and net. The difference between like, expenses and, and gross. I mean, like... People don't realize that. They just they just look at I mean Explain it. Listen, there's something there's, some, there's something Rose to, versus net. Say there's it. something to be said about being able to earn a couple hundred thousand dollars with a pickup truck and a trailer for most people who are coming from nine to fives that are making maybe fifty thousand a year, forty thousand a year, maybe sixty or seventy. So there's something to be said about that, but being able to keep that money is a totally different story. And that's where a lot of people get discouraged because they'll get into the game and, and the, you know, of transportation, which is very highly expensed. They'll make all this money and then they'll be like, damn, where did it all go? And then they'll file their taxes. And then they're like, holy crap, I had to take a loss this year. And I made 220,000. Like what the hell's going on? And I was down three months. <laughs> yeah. People just don't, a lot of, listen, there's a difference between hustling and running a business. Running a business is, is, knowing your expenses, projecting out, you know, and, and understanding the difference between gross and net and understanding what it's like to be in it, to take losses and to be able to weather those and to have money set aside and to, you know, have funds set aside for maintenance. And, you know, it's like, I don't know the exact context of your guys's like, y'all's conversation that you had before but i you know there is money that you can make in here but you're not going to walk away with that this especially with a hot shot um and with i mean some guys sleep in their truck i don't sleep on my truck you know so i do about fourteen thousand a year just in just in um uh hotels so i mean it's well and for context i want to say this is that Oh, I hear the audio. Um, that's me. Check, check. Okay, so uh, context is, the, it really, it's the pickup truck. And this gets to, this I think is one of those core areas where lots of people have pickup trucks and they want to put it to work. And you said it really well. You want to get out of that 9 to 5. That, you know, that's not what you had in mind. 
and we've gone through the since the world's gone through a big shakeup, this is a good time to go out on your own. Mm-hmm. Put that pickup to work, be hot shot, and then you know hustle. <coughs> you said the word hustle. Every time I hear hustle, I know that's fancy and trendy and great. I know that's really nerdy of me to say that, but. When every time I hear hustle, I feel like you're not running a business. I'm yeah. so sorry. No, there's a difference between hustling and running a business. Yeah. Absolutely. Please do not say hustle. A huge difference. Yes. <laughs> In fact, if you put hot shot with hustle, hot shot hustle, you've completely lost me. Yeah. Please do not. I mean, hustle hot, shot, hot shot. Hot shot pretty much means hustle, honestly. Because if you're <laughs> if you're running a business, you're not a hot. You're running a trucking company. Even if you have a truck, a pickup truck and a trailer, you're not a hot shot. You're 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 a trucker. And I've <laughs> you're, been you're, saying you're running a business. You know what's so funny, Washon? I feel like I've started a trend where I'm actually saying not only do I say dispatchers are not illegal, but I also say stop saying hot shot. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Stop. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. No, I get it. I get it. Um Yeah, I get it. Absolutely. So Washon, let me ask some more questions. You did oh, no. the car hauling for a little while. How long? Two I mean, years. I know you still do it, but so we we'll we'll throw cars on like here and there to like fill a gap, but we don't primarily haul cars. No. Right. Primarily for you broke her. There was a one thing with a three car that I noticed. Um, with my three car, I made more money than with my five car. I did a lot of deadhead with the five car. I did a lot of chasing cars, and you know I did twice the amount of miles with that I do um, cars are really cheap. Any way you look at it, cars are cheap. 70 cents for half of my trailer for 5,000 pounds is it's, it's too much. It's, it's not enough money. You know what I mean? Any way you look at it, cars are cheap freight. Nothing's going on my trailer for 70 cents a mile, <laughs> like nothing. So I, that I don't, I, there was multiple reasons why I got out of cars, but especially with that five car, I was thinking in my mind, like, you know, five cars, that's two more cars. That's well, I had a three car modified to four, but I was thinking five cars. It's an extra one to five cars. It's more money, but there's a lot more chasing around when you're on load boards. But for me, it was difficult. And I, I know that you guys, have a, a structure in a way that you've built relationships. People keep your car, you know, you have dedicated lanes and dedicated auctions that you go to and from. I never, I never went to the auctions and explored that. Um, Cause I, I, I really honestly wanted to get out of cars and wanted to go to flatbed and eventually uh, either go all non-asset. Because you picked your lane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so our plan is to either be completely non-asset or we're at the point where we're figuring out like we've whether we're going to go completely non-asset or we're going to buy a, an 18 wheeler, a class eight semi with a flatbed. Um, we have some things in the works, so we're we're still trying to figure out which direction we're going to go in. Um and right now with the shortage of trucks and um, trucks are all a year out for a brand new truck, Peterbilt, uh, Freightliner, Volvo, so we were there last week to all dealerships are all out a year if you want something brand new. And we had to use Freightliner before with all the emissions, it was, it was a nightmare. So we would like to go brand new and not have to deal with something used. So. And even what is used on the market right now is like super overpriced. So it's like, you might as well buy buy something brand new. Uh, But anyways, we're, we're working on things. We will either be a hundred percent non-asset or we'll have, we'll still be running the broker side with one truck, probably more than likely flatbed. And I'll, I'll continue to drive until we can put somebody in the seat that we can trust. Good. So I'm going to walk away with uh, takes work, takes time, and uh, <clears throat> relationships seem to be the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm in this for the 10-year plan. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not trying to, like, have 
a fleet of trucks. Like that's really not the way that I want to go. Um, I'm not trying to, as of right now that could change, but you know, I'm just, we're, we have a plan and we're, and we're sticking to our plan and that's not a two year plan. That's a, you know, two years to the peak We're we're working on our 10 year plan. So, um, you know, we'll hit our milestones as we get there, as we get to our, but yes, absolutely. Back to your point without relationships, just, you're not like, you can't run a business without relationships. You can't run a business if you're if you're not in sales, if you can't get out and talk to people, if you can't network, if you can't be genuine, if you can't be honest, um, if everybody can't walk away from the deal happy, then you know it's it's just not a way to run a business. So you you're all, you just building relationships, being honest, working hard. Kind of sounds cliche, but that's really honestly what it goes to. You can't, and, and the low boards are helpful, but you can't sustain a business off low boards. You just can't. It's you can only get so far. You're gonna hit a wall, and then you're gonna get frustrated if that's you know what your plan is. And if you can't do those things, then you're in the hustle. Yeah, that's called yeah. hustling. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, why, Sean? It was good to have you come on and good to get caught up, man. We really Great appreciate having you. you on, why, Sean? Tell Jess yeah. hi. Stay yeah. in touch. Absolutely. It was good to see you, Ty. Good to see you, Jay. Jess says hi to you guys. And you guys, uh, if you ever need anything, you ever have any questions, you ever need somebody, call me, reach out to me. I got your back. We'll have you back sometime. Come back again in 2022. All right. You got it, guys. Cool. Thanks, right, guys. Take care. Bye. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put him back in the waiting room. I'm going to keep you here for a minute, Ty. Um, takeaways, Ty. Takeaways. Uh, <clears throat> takeaway would be that you're uh, – <clears throat> that, and this is fun, I think, me. I think it's fun. But you can start a business with something in mind, and if you're open-minded, you can shift to something that maybe works better for you. And, you know, our buddy Brian Pepson, same story. You know, he came in, started wanting to be a car hauler, involved cars. Dude, he's blowing it up in the freight world right now. Does What does that mean? You know, I've thought about that. What does that mean? Brian and why Sean don't know how to talk to car guys? No, that's not what that means. I don't know what it means. I just know that <clears throat> whatever they do, they, their interests, they connect with somebody who's doing something maybe different than cars. There's a connection there, that relationship that we keep talking about. So that's why today, talking to Amber, I'm like, all right, the lady that signed up for ATI Insight, go talk to car dealers. If you really want to know what is going on, go ask a car dealer. Call it market research. I don't care. If you've got a question and you want to know the answer, I'll do my best to help you. But if you don't even want to call me, go talk to the guy who's doing the job, the car guy, the buyer, the dealer, right? Okay. So yeah. uh, takeaway is... They stayed in it. They are determined. They, they, they always get their eyes open. They're always looking. They're always listening. They're always paying attention. That's the takeaway. And I'll tell you, you said a couple things. Number one, uh, keeping an open mind and listening. It seems like the world, the universe, the galaxy, and everybody within it believes that they're open-minded and listening. Okay? But I read something recently about the ability to change one's mind. We definitely know some people that do never change their mind. Do never. Don't ever change their mind. And you have to be able. You have got to be able to one day go, that definitely isn't working. I've got to change. It doesn't mean you're a flip-flopper or any other garbage. It means you're paying attention and you're truly ready to make some changes and adjustments. Think, think of the quarterbacks on the field. Who doesn't watch football on Sundays? Me. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Right, exactly. But the quarterback has to make adjustments. The quarterback can't say, you know what, coach? That's great and all. But, you know, you don't know. Psst. You know, you don't hustle and all this stuff. No? You got to listen to the coach. Unless you want to keep losing every Sunday. So find a coach, find a mentor, and be able to maybe change your mind now and then. 
And if you see the mentor, if you if you if you wake up one day and realize your mentor's got it wrong, get a new mentor. That's another thing I feel like I see. Like I don't know why people hang on to these mentors that clearly over time it didn't work out. Change up the mentor, dude. Fire the coach. Pre getting your information. All right. Where did you get that idea? Pre getting your information. Well, uh, back to so Auto Transport Intel, here's here's what's good. Auto Transport Intel has a show on Tuesday night. Tuesday night seems to be the show that you have like executives or CEOs or owners or presidents or whatever. Uh, people that work at big companies. Tuesday night seems to be like, wow, that's crazy. How would you get those people to show up? Wednesday, you can learn about the DOT, right? You got DOT questions. You're trying to build your business. Want to start your business. Brian, good guy. Thursday is Dispatching Live. I like Dispatching Live. It's probably my personal favorite because it really exposes how ridiculous this entire industry really is. I just said that. Friday, you got Cars on the Move, right? <clears throat> cars on the Move. We connect auctions, dealers, and carriers. Point being, why am I talking about the show schedule, the car shipping business channel? It's because it's the car shipping business channel and it has everything you need to be a successful transport company so ambers keeps asking me so what other services do you offer are available what do you mean well i mean what other services are available i don't understand the question well do you help people am i helping you right now for free yeah is it good help yeah it's great help right okay well you got another question that is bigger than me call me i'll probably know somebody who has the answer to the question that's the ecosystem that we built. We have people that are a lot smarter than us that know things we don't know and we rely on them because they do it every day. That's another thing we do not see enough of is a network being built. I can name several folks that are the head coach, backup coach, assistant coach, and every other position because it's just one guy running the whole, what are you talking about? I had, do you know I had a car shipper email me last night, right before midnight. Do you think I called them and said, I can ship your car? No. I gave them to Sue. And Amber, when she emailed me, I gave her to you. And if somebody's out of service, I give them to Brian. That's how it works. That's called an organization. Oh, yeah. Well, if we get an email from a car hauler trailer manufacturer, not in the USA, that needs some advice and help, we call Randy. <laughs> I mean, so the, and this is what's funny, guys. I don't know if you realize this. This, this show doesn't just exist in the United States. <laughs> now, that's a mind blowing thought right there. Whoa. But the point being, we're here to help. We're not we don't have the answers. We're just telling you, be careful. OK. It's, you can lose a lot of money. You can really mess your head up and you can probably physically get hurt. Like I was thinking the other day, so this is funny. Okay. How many people want to be a car hauler and think, oh, it's easy. No, it's not easy. This is just kind of a dangerous job. Why? I'll show you why. Watch. This is funny. Hey, Matt. My buddy Jay. Jay, I don't Matt, know. Jay. Uh, hey, Matt. First friend, time. He's up in Lee Summit. You got a Lee YouTube Summit. channel for car homes. Cool. And I was showing right. people you, you got it. This is a new 7509. Use, new use. New use, new to me. New to you. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I love it too. I bet you do because yeah. you used to have a high rail. Oh, yeah. I got rid that. of that. Now, I can haul two doobies on this thing. You can see that it was hurt me before. I'd show up and there'd be two doobies there. I'd get one doobie and that's it. Yeah, this is that. Can I show them your trailer real quick? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this, this is, is actually a, one of your old trailers. One of my old ones. It came, it it like came it. out from behind that gray. Uh, Chris's old truck? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It was a white truck. It came out from behind the white truck. I had a couple of white ones. Uh, James, James actually owns the truck now. I can't remember James' last name. But, you know. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it looks familiar. Change suit. Are you going to convert it eventually? Maybe? I've got straps. i got ratchet straps if I need them. But. My Most of the stuff we haul use, we don't need it anyway. Yeah. Anything down low, I can throw a hook on it. Just a couple, couple little tugs and you're done, you know? Yeah. Now I get to the back and I throw a strap on it. Yeah. Because it's, it's easy. So 
7509 trailer, you can haul six vehicles, depends on vehicle size. You've got this deck. This deck goes down, middle deck on the bottom, right here. So you can back one in and drop it, right? Right. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Here's your control valve, up, down. Yeah, I remember this old trailer. Yeah. It's a good one. Now, I'm going to show them the, the, the difference between the two, because you used to have a high rail. The trailer was a high rail to match that color. See that color? Can you see that? Match that, but it was a high rail trailer. That used to be kind of hard to challenge the load, right? Dang. The I didn't neck. like it at all. You didn't like the high no, rail? I don't like a high rail at all. I've never liked a high rail. Don't like I've had two of them actually. Yeah. I had a black one after the, after the gold one. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I have run the gold one until it finally it just everything. It, it was just so old, you know. And so then I bought a, a black one that actually like this. Yeah. Instead of being three decks on top, oh. it was just two. Oh. And it was a lot easier oh. and it was better. But it's still. What was the name of it? Yeah, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Did it have the stinger attachment? Yeah, it was a stinger trailer. Oh. Seems like that. But it only had two decks on top. So me hauling pickups all the time the way I do. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. That was, that was an upgrading grade. But it was better. Yeah. Right. So if you guys are paying attention, Matt has his own customer base. Matt knows his customers. What is his customer? If you're paying attention, you figured it out. Your customers buy a lot of trucks. Lot of trucks. <laughs> it's called paying attention, right? Listen. <laughs> Matt hauls a lot of trucks. There's a truck. See it? And look. Oh, there's another truck. Then going to get two more big three-quarter tons of toppers. Oh, they got to go on the top. they got to go on top, but I'll have to put this down in for and, and leave them on the slant or they won't clear no bridges from here. Here and where we're headed. <laughs> yeah. Matt's transport, Matt, uh, been in business for quite a while. 18 years. 18. My son turned 18 in August, and I actually started three months before he was born. Yeah, it's been a while, ain't it? It's amazing. I just, I, I, I turn around, and I'm going, gosh, 6'1", 220. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> big, big kid, boy. You know, but, uh, you know, he's 18. And I got to sneak it. So that's what happened. We got into car hall. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, Matt. See you, All right. So there's Matt. And then, uh, this is still a stinger, right? Okay, get it? It's a stinger because of that. He just has a different trailer, and it's easier to load that trailer, especially when he knows his customers because he has customers. Oh, it's because he did it for 18 years, Ty. That's why right. now. Now, I know Matt. Matt's had customers from day one, right? Uh I don't. I get tired of saying it. I really do. I feel like a jerk when I say it. I'm just, I'm just telling you, dude. That was an awesome, awesome segment. Awesome. Because I tell you what, you know, that's one of the one of the formulas of a great cars on the move is you've got live in the auction transport parking lot, meeting members of the ecosystem, talking to people that can validate what it is that you say the connecting the dealers the auctions the carriers the lanes and then seeing equipment we got the trifecta that's a that's a complete show you got it you nailed it that's what i'm here for jay yeah. every friday at noon cars dude. on the move where we connect dealers auctions and carriers dude nice Bingo. Nice. Uh, no, this really, you know, I'm, I, I can keep talking about car, hauling cars, car hauling them forever. And I'm just telling you, you look at, you look at, I, okay. I, I look at what I know and I'm telling you it works. And so the funny part is, is I'm not asking you for money. I'm showing you it works. So why do we do this, Jay? Are, are you rich? It's funny. Are I you was rich, Jay? Honestly, five minutes ago, I was going to say, because we don't have views to the moon. You know, we don't have. No, I'm not rich at all. I'm, you see me. I sit I at spent, this desk. I, spent out. I got a new shirt. That's it. I got. Today, it's all the same stuff from a year ago. As of this week, I've spent three hours on the phone with various people just talking about car hauling and their business. For no compensation. Am I stupid? Maybe. But do I care about this ecosystem? Do I care about car dealers? Do I? Do I? 
You yeah. absolutely do. Yes, you do. Did I make any money off the car shipper that came in at midnight? No. 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 We're here to help. Yeah. We're here to help. We, are. we do what we love, and when we do what we love, money comes later. All right? We love you. We love your business. We love the ecosystem. We understand it's a little bit complicated. This is a, this is a platform to come and try to unpack it. I was thinking last night. Who in the world has a carrier, a large carrier, and a repo company on the same panel? Oh, wow. Yeah. Remember that? Well, and then, Who and does I, that? That's another thing I was going to say is that one, we kind of got our marching orders when we realized it's no secret that this industry is fragmented. And when I say that, I'm going to be specific. The dealers hang out and the carriers hang out. And you'll rarely find a carrier and a dealer mixing it up other than because he's delivering his car. And you can do that, sure. But if you find that inspiration to walk from your group to another group and start talking, yeah, it's awkward and whatever, but it's amazing what you can accomplish. And that is what this industry needs. People have got to get out of their clicks. We all know. We, I remember high school. There were cliques in high school. Are you going to spend the rest of your life in your clique? Just in your clique? You're never going to get out of your clique. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do gonna, that. We're going to subscribe and like ATI, and we're going to call Ty if you need anything. We're going to have a good weekend because we're going to all stay safe. Break the clique. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Ty. See you, buddy. Bye. Thank you. All right. And everybody else, thank you so much. And if you joined in the live chat, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. This is Cars on the Move. This is Auto Transport Intel. We didn't even talk about Tuesday night. I'm just going to say this Tuesday night. Again, we are breaking out of the clicks. I'm not just saying it. If you tune in, you know it. And the views, I think, reflect it. Because this is not, we're not, you know, we didn't just quit again. And everybody's going bankrupt. And the truck's breaking down. La, 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 la. We don't do that. We're breaking out of the click. We're connecting the verticals. If you don't want to be a part of the future, yeah, there's plenty of places to go. We're moving forward. Tuesday night, we're going to be talking with dealers. We got Sky Hallman, One Auction View. We got Tim Scatalus, Max Digital. Paul Machine is going to be on the show. We also have a new panelist. Uh, I think his name's Tom Gray. I got to meet with him. We never even talked, but he's going to be on the show Tuesday night. The show is Dealers Acquiring Inventory. Because we know if somebody bought a car or is selling a car, guess what? They're transporting it to. Thank you so much for joining us on Cars on the Move on Auto Transport Intel. We need to get uncomfortable. There it is. Um, and if you do it often enough, well, if you get if you get uncomfortable often enough, if you see me do it live every week, is you get used to it. And then you start to get good at just shooting from the hip as long as you know you know what you believe in and that is you want to run a business grow a business build a business build relationships and you want to do it right and you want to build a legacy that you can pass on and be proud of well shoot man you don't need a script for that go do it get out of your comfort zone have a great weekend thank you guys so much peace out i'll see you tuesday night please join us